Hello students, this is the part 5 of our nervous system lecture series. Here we will try to understand the process of generation and propagation of nerve impulse. This video will be a little bit stretchy as compared to other videos of the series. As we will go from very basic to a lot of details here only. First we will try to recap our knowledge about membrane proteins. We know that there are two different types of membrane proteins if we classify them broadly. One is intrinsic protein or integral protein which are tightly bound to the phospholipid bilayer. As we can see in the diagram, these are intrinsic protein. These are also called transmembrane protein. Transmembrane protein because it connects the surface, outer surface of the membrane to its inner surface. Another is extrinsic protein or peripheral protein which remain loosely bound to the lipid bilayer. As we can see in the diagram, there are some proteins which can be inside of the cell or outside of the cell, but they are peripheral or they are loosely bound. So extrinsic. Now the movement of substances across cell membrane can be divided into two types. Either it is active or it is passive. In case of passive transport, molecules move from their higher concentrated region to lower concentrated region without using energy of the cell. If the molecules are small sized and non-polar in nature, then they can easily cross the thick hydrophobic part of the cell membrane. And this movement is referred to as simple diffusion. But if the molecules are charged or polar in nature, then they require a integral membrane protein through which it can be transported and it is referred to as facilitated type of diffusion and it also occurs without using ATP of the cell and passive transport is also called downhill transport as you can see in the diagram that a ball is rolling down a hill and from your concept of physics you can say that it is moving from its higher gravitational potential that means higher potential to do work to a lower gravitational potential where it has lower internal energy. In the same way, molecules in higher concentrated region has higher chemical potential than the molecules in lower concentrated region, resulting in net movement of molecules towards lower concentrated region by releasing energy, which is a downhill transport. Whereas the movement of substances from its lower concentrated region to higher concentrated region forcefully with the help of ATP of the cell is referred to as active transport and it is an uphill type of transport. And the protein involved in it is called a pump protein. Now let us see the functioning of a pump protein. This is a sodium potassium ATPase pump and it is one of the most important membrane protein behind the excitability of neuron. Sodium potassium ATPase pump has three binding sites for sodium and two binding sites for potassium. When three cytoplasmic sodium binds to its site in the pump protein, then an ATP arrives and ATP gets attached to the protein and here protein acts as an enzyme. So the protein is an ATPase enzyme. It causes hydrolysis of ATP. And due to the hydrolysis of ATP, the ADP is removed and phosphate remain attached. The inorganic phosphate remain attached to the protein. So we can call it phosphorylation reaction. So the phosphorylation of protein changes the energy state that resulted in three-dimensional configurational change in the pump protein and thereby releasing three sodium outside. In the meantime, two potassium attaches to the protein and there occurs dephosphorylation. That means the phosphate, inorganic phosphate is removed from the protein. The protein again returns, the protein again returns to its ground state and thereby releasing two potassium inside. Now, based on these concepts of various membrane protein, we will try to understand how a neuron generates 
membrane potential across its plasma membrane membrane potential is a minute potential difference that is generated across the cell membrane due to the separation of positively or negatively charged ions now this membrane potential is present throughout the neuron and due to this membrane potential or due to the fluctuations in membrane potential there is generation of graded potential in exon hillock region and if the graded potential reaches a particular threshold level then this can lead to the formation of action potential therefore there are three important potential difference recording in the neuron one is the membrane potential another is graded potential now this graded potential can only be recorded in the exon hillock region so due to the minute fluctuations in this membrane potential there is generation of graded potential membrane potential is present throughout the neuron but graded potential only in exon hillock and this graded potential leads to the generation of action potential which then travels along the length of exon so what is a potential in simple layman's term in physics potential simply refers to the separation of charges if we think of battery then there is also separation of positive and negative charge and this separation is responsible for the potential of the battery which means the potential to do work and it is measured in volt so a 9 volt battery would be having more charge separation than a 3 volt battery that means it has more potential similarly in a nerve cell we can find that there are separation of charges across the cell membrane and there is more number of positively charged ions outside the cell membrane and more negatively charged ions in the intracellular fluid so extracellular fluid has a net positive charge and intracellular fluid has a net negative charge how this charge differences are generated we will see this now back in the 1940s two scientists named hodgkin and huxley as you can see in the screen set up the pioneer experiments in the field of neurophysiology at the university of cambridge but as the cells are in the dimension of micrometer so with the techniques available at that time the necessary measurements could be made only if you had a very large exon to work with and luckily we have such an exon in squid squid which is a mollusk has a giant exon and which has a diameter of around 1 mm and hodgkin and huxley used this exon to study the electrical properties of neuron on the basis of their series of experiments scientific community came to know about the electrophysiology of neuron and for this they have received the nobel prize of 1963 now just pause the video and write down the different ionic concentration in intracellular and extracellular fluid of a squid exon on which hodgkin worked on and a mammalian neuron so human neuron would be more or less similar to the cat neuron given here so let us understand the basics of equilibrium potential or a resting membrane potential here a plasma membrane which is composed of phospholipid bilayer has aqueous environment in both the sides and if we zoom into the section of plasma membrane then we can see that there is a hydrophobic core for ions to pass through this hydrophobic core they require ion channels and these ion channels can remain closed or open based on stimulus these ion channels are highly specific that means if this channel allows sodium 
then only sodium can pass through it potassium calcium or chloride cannot pass through so for potassium there can be another ion channel same similarly for chloride there can be another ion channel now if the membrane has equal number of positive and negative charged ions across it then there will be no potential difference so voltage will be zero let's consider there are equal concentration of potassium chloride in chamber 1 and chamber 2 let's say it is 5 millimolar so in chamber 2 also 5 millimolar potassium chloride and the channels present in the membrane only allows potassium to pass through so this are the potassium channels so there are no chloride channel in this membrane and the potassium is depicted by this orange sphere and the green sphere denotes chloride ion by carefully observing you can see that some potassium travels from chamber 2 to chamber 1 and some potassium comes from chamber 1 to chamber 2 but you should know that there would be no net flow of potassium as there is equal concentration of potassium in both the chamber so we will get a reading of 0 volt in the voltmeter now if we increase the concentration of potassium chloride in chamber 1 by 10 times as that of chamber 2 then we will find a concentration gradient that drives the diffusion of potassium towards chamber 2 now as potassium leaves chamber 1 then there will be net negative charge in the chamber 1 and there will be net positive charge in chamber 2 let us take for example to just to make you understand say there are 10 potassium chloride here in chamber 1 and 2 potassium chloride in chamber 2 so two potassium chloride will dissociate into two potassium and two chloride so chloride is insignificant because there is no chloride channel in this membrane so there will be 10 potassium ion and 10 chloride now from that 10 potassium four will travel to the chamber 2 this makes chamber 2 Two plus four, so there will be total six potassium in chamber two, and in chamber one, ten minus four, so there will be six potassium in chamber one. So in both side there is six potassium ion. So potassium is in equilibrium. So when potassium is in equilibrium, in chamber one there are ten chloride ions. but in chamber 2 there are only two chloride ion so here in chamber 2 there will be net four positive so 6k plus and 2 cl minus there will be four positive and in chamber 1 10 negative and only six potassium so six positive so there will be net four negative i think you got it in that case when just one potassium traveled from chamber 1 to chamber 2 the chamber 2 has net positive and chamber 1 has net negative charge so as the positive charge builds in chamber 2 this will be hard for potassium to move towards chamber 2 now you all can easily observe that there is a net diffusional force acting on potassium towards chamber 2 but as some of the potassium just entered into chamber 2 there is a development of a net electrical force towards chamber 1 and if there are 10 times more potassium in chamber 1 then a equilibrium is reached when there is a potential difference of 58 millivolt across the membrane let's see how we came to the conclusion that there will be 58 millivolt potential difference at equilibrium look at this particular scenario here the inside of the membrane has more positively charged ions than the outside of the membrane but we have connected a battery and its positive terminal to the outside and negative terminal to the inside so there is a net electric field towards inside of the membrane 
but due to concentration gradient the ions has the tendency to move outward whereas due to electric force the ions has the tendency the positive ions has the tendency to move inward now where the ions will flow outward or inward or how can we compare a concentration gradient to a electric gradient the answer to this lies in the nernst equation so in this case the equilibrium potential for that positively charged ion simply means how much voltage that battery must have just to perfectly balance the outward flow so the outward flow of ions just to perfectly balance the outward flow how much voltage that battery must have so whether it is 7 volt or 8 volt or 10 volt or in that case 58 millivolt what you have found now let's quickly understand the formula of nernst equation here the equilibrium potential for a ion is a uh, determined by some constant you, you can see here that r is the universal gas constant t is the temperature and f is the faraday constant and z is the valence of the ion so in case of potassium it will be just plus 1 and ln means natural log and ion zero means here it is outside the concentration and i means the inside concentration now putting all the values of the constant and converting the natural log into log to the base 10 we can derive that the equation shortens into this form so now the charge for that potassium ion is just plus 1 and log to the ionic concentration if it is 10 times of that of inside then the, then it will be log 10 and it will be just 1 so the equilibrium potential for that ion will remain just 58 so if we apply this equation in our previous scenario let's see so here chamber 1 was having 10 times more potassium than chamber 2 so in our equation that e equal to 58 by z then log k plus in 1 by k plus in 2 so that concentration becomes as 10 times 10 by 1 so this terms become 1 so e finally comes 58 now we know how to find the equilibrium potential using this equation but hodgkin and huxley back in 1940s found out the equilibrium potential in the squid's giant exon using glass microelectrode so the experimental setup of hodgkin can be simplified like this where the squid giant exon is placed in saline solution and there are two electrode one is reference electrode and another is microelectrode reference electrode is always placed in the saline solution and the microelectrode when placed in saline then there is no potential difference across this two electrode so there will be a, a reading of 0 millivolt in the oscilloscope where the voltage is recorded now if we place this microelectrode inside of the exon then we can find that there is a potential difference of minus 65 millivolt here the negative sign refers to that the inside is more negative that means microelectrode is recording more negative as compared to the outside where there is reference electrode so a neuron achieves and maintains a resting membrane potential that means a potential difference when the neuron is not conducting any impulse or at rest this potential is achieved mainly due to some channel proteins and a pump protein so this is a section of a human neuron here 
we can observe that there are some sodium channel but it is very less in number so in this section there is only one sodium channel and there are many potassium channel so there are many potassium channel and there are very less or very very less sodium channels and there are numerous sodium potassium pump these sodium potassium pump continuously expose three sodium outside and two potassium inside so all the pumps are doing same and they are using an atp to do that so atp dissociates into adp and an inorganic phosphate this results in the very high concentration of potassium inside and very high concentration of sodium outside in the extracellular fluid in the extracellular fluid there is high concentration of calcium as well and there is high concentration of chloride whatever may be the concentration of individual ions biologically in any cell including neuron the amount of positive charge inside must be equal to the amount of negative charge and this is the law of electrical neutrality in resting state the membrane of a neuron is more permeable to potassium ion as there are many potassium channels and this membrane is nearly impermeable to sodium ion as the number of sodium channels are very less so let's see what is happening here due to the activity of sodium potassium pump there are more sodium in the extracellular fluid and there are very less sodium in the intracellular fluid similarly there are more potassium in the intracellular fluid and there are very less potassium in the extracellular fluid along with that in the intracellular fluid there is negatively charged proteins due to the presence of a lot of potassium channel potassium slowly moves out of the cell as inside is inside has more potassium and outside has less potassium and these channels are called leak channels so leak potassium channels so from our concept of equilibrium potential as soon as some potassium moves out of the cell the outside becomes net positive so as soon as some of the potassium leaves outside becomes net positive and inside becomes net negative earlier it was under the law of electrical neutrality but now there is net negative charge inside and positive charge outside and there is development of potential across the membrane and in case of human that potential is minus 70 millivolt which is the resting membrane potential but to maintain this resting membrane potential the pump have to work continuously why due to the presence of very less number of sodium channels small amount of sodium slowly enters into the cell and thereby disrupting this membrane potential so the entry of sodium from outside where there is high concentration of sodium resulted in increase in positive charge inside and so the resting membrane potential slowly becomes less negative so the separation of charges due to which a potential was generated in the membrane is now decreasing due to the entry of more and more positive charge and this resting membrane potential now approaches towards zero so from minus 70 it is going towards minus 50 minus 20 then it is approaching towards zero when there will be no net charge separation and no potential across the membrane so here comes the function of sodium potassium atps pump which continuously removes the sodium that entered into the neuron and imports potassium so that the resting membrane potential which was earlier that means minus 70 millivolt it can be restored